Welcome back, guys. So um, Monday, day after the Valspar, we uh, I think we're all glued to the TV yesterday. I was I was glued to it yeah. almost the entire weekend. Yeah, it was awesome. I think uh, this this whole thing of just Tiger being back and genuinely back oh. has captivated Playing everyone. Yeah, Playing without a doubt. And there's plenty of people who aren't pulling for him, and mm -hmm. you know that's fine. But I think as long as everyone is aware that this is good for the game, yeah. you know, more eyeballs, more sponsorship money in more headlines is only good for all of us. I don't know how anyone who's a wise golf fan yeah. could say that there's anything wrong with yeah. Tiger being back. If you don't like him, fine. You don't want him to win, fine. But yeah. the vibe at that tournament was insane. Imagine if he wasn't there. There's half the amount of people. Oh, without a doubt. The, the, the fairways looked like, looked like Augusta with, with the, uh, they were like 20 deep. Yeah, I know. And the I noise, know. like, just, yeah, a totally different atmosphere. Yeah, without a doubt. So great to see him, uh, great to see him back and really, you know, really close um, to, to getting the win. I mean, he was, he was playing good enough to get that win for sure. Yep. I mean, strokes gained on the week. He was third in the field, strokes yep. gained uh, off the tee. Uh, tee to, sorry, tee, to green, tee right? to green. Yeah. That pretty much for any other week for Tiger Woods means a win. Yeah, right. Oh, for sure he would have It means a win because he normally will putt better than average in the field and yesterday he for the or, or over the week he was he was just average i think he was point zero point six yeah. strokes per gained on the greens and that's what i when i was chatting with family and friends about like why didn't he win yeah just a few putts that's a couple it. birdie putts and he three putted he had an eagle putt he three putted yeah that. so take that one and give him a birdie yeah and one more of those eight footers goes in wins the turn he wins the turn literally all there was yeah, I mean that's it with the strokes the strokes gained off uh, off the tee and, and or, or strokes gained on, on full shots. Yeah. He would have any other week he would have he would have won. Yeah, he hit it great. I, I liked yeah. and, and lots of pro tracer, which as I said I love. Yeah. He had so many cool little shots. Yeah. I forget what hole, but one of the long par fives, he hit that big high draw yeah. five iron, I think it was. Like, just really nice swings. Really cool. So good to see Tiger back, but he never got the win in Paul Casey did. Yes. So we um, about Paul Casey. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> we're, we're, we were uh, Matt and I were kind of talking, you know, on Saturday and we're like, I wonder if we're going to get to, you know, dissect Tiger's bag. But no, it's Paul Casey and we're going to talk to you a little bit about why he uses certain equipment that he does in the bag. So mm -hmm. Casey was one of the, the Nike staffers that were set free when Nike obviously folded the, the equipment side of the business mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. So he became his, a free agent, which was always, which is really, for me, was really interesting to yeah. see where they gravitate towards. Absolutely. You know, I thought that was fascinating. Uh, and he did, he gravitated towards TaylorMade Woods. Yep. He tested a few different iron companies, but went to Mizuno. Interesting. Um, so he is not paid to play Mizuno. He plays that Mizuno MP5 because he wants to. Is he paid to play the Woods in TaylorMade? He has a contract. He has a contract. Yeah, he has so a contract. Were, uh, he was allowed to say just Woods, no yes, irons. Yes, that's yeah. it. Exactly. Very exactly. Cool. So um, let's run through the bag with Casey. A pretty popular win. Uh, a bit of a bridesmaid on the PGA Tour for the last you know, year or so. Yeah, or a couple, couple of years he's been playing some really good golf. And how many Euro Tour wins since his last tour? It was like three or four? Yeah, three it? or four certainly since his last PGA Tour win in 2009. So he's, he's played good golf. He's been playing good and last year, you know, 10 top 10s. Yeah. He seemed like he was, he was in contention every week, but he talked quite openly about, you know, on Sunday he just fe didn't feel like he could get the putts in. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't... That was all know, the difference. Yeah, he just had to close the deal. Um, Yesterday was a bit different for him because he came from behind. He did. You know, he uh, he shot a great round, and you know I was watching the coverage, and, and he was kind of sneaking up, making these birdies, and he was at seven under, and he was he was making a lot of birdies, and, and I, I know the commentators were saying, what do, what do you think he needs to get to to yeah. make it interesting? Because he's going to be in an hour before the leaders. It, he was way yeah with four yeah. groups. Yeah, or yeah. oh, at least maybe yeah maybe maybe a bit more, but yeah. you know the um, the thing with Casey was he was able to post ten and put the pressure on them. When he, when he hit that chip that was kind of substandard on 18, I thought, uh, he's got to make that putt. When he made the putt, I yeah. thought, I bet you that 10 under will make a difference. Because at, at yeah. that point, you saw Tiger wasn't really doing anything. No. Rosie was kind of falling back. Patrick Reed was, was the he, one who, it who looked was, like he was making a run. run. Yeah. yeah. So it, it definitely. was definitely, you're right. It was came down to putting as it so yeah. often does with, with these guys. I know. Yeah. yeah, and Casey had a great week in the greens finally. So um, so great for him to get the win. So, you know, on, on his kind of equipment, right uh, right now he's got the M4 uh, in the bag, the tailor-made M4. He uses the 10.5. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's been a Mitsubishi shaft guy forever mm. right for as long as for as long as i've known paul casey to be out there he's played 
different versions of the Diamana Blue. Okay. Right. That so strap has been around for how long? 2004. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. 2004. So he's used that for a long time. Yeah. So right now in the driver, he's playing the the Diamana, the D Plus, the 70 TX. Yep. Um, so he's he's he'd be really been a big fan of that. And just from what I know about him, is he playing the M4 because he's he's a low launch guy? Like he doesn't hit a high ball off the tee. So do you think that's why he got into this this head versus the M3? Yeah, I mean perhaps we are seeing M4 launch a little higher than M uh, M3. I mean right. we done some testing earlier today and we saw that that very yes. thing. You know when when you make that much uh, pull that much weight back into the head, you know 41 grams right back. You know at the furthest point from mm -hmm. the face you are going to bring that CG back and, and that's going to result in higher launch, lower spin. Yep. So obviously he found that was the right combination for him. Yeah, because I always knew him to be a little bit more of a lower launch, yeah. higher spin type yep. guy. Yep. So he's picking A little up. more penetrating. And then shaft wise, that shaft is just a nice low launch, very stable. Very kinda. stable tip, yep, yep. yeah, exactly. So the, the D plus um, is, is the, the stiffer tipped version. Uh, the S plus uh, okay. is, is a slightly softer tip version. Of the white. Yes. So now two, is there two versions of that? Well, the, the, the D plus, there's a D plus range and then there's the actual whiteboard itself. So um, the whiteboard does still, yeah. still current range? Well, right now, so they, they're actually in the process of prototyping what's going to be called the white force. Okay. So they have it being tested right now. It's, it's a, a, a sort of version of the shaft that Justin Thomas has been playing, which is yep. the, the blue force, yep. the D amount of BF, which he's been uh, playing unbelievable golf yes, with. So the white force is a slightly uh, more tip stiff version of that, but um, Casey's uh, profile is a slightly older one. Interesting. Yeah, he's been playing that one for a while. But as you say, he's been a uh, Mitsubishi guy for so long. Forever. It just yeah. suits him to kind of stick with those guys and similar feel, I guess, even though it's different profiles, same company, similar yep. materials. Absolutely, and, and they know him well, and they know what, what profiles he fits into. So mm -hmm. when they, when heads start doing certain things, you know, a shaft starts to make, a head starts to produce higher launch numbers, they maybe go to a slightly stiffer profile. Okay. You know, when a, a head is doing the opposite, they maybe go to a softer profile. So, you know, really the, the shaft choice is di dictated from what the head does. Which is so interesting to me, because yeah. I mean, the company is obviously, like Mitsubishi is not owned by TaylorMade, and there's no, there's no. no combination of that at all none so it's up to those shaft companies to go to TaylorMade yeah. and ping and all these mm -hmm. ones and say what are you guys up to that's 100 percent that, that's and exactly what we right. need to do to suit your your new offerings yep. every year well i remember when the, the TaylorMade sldr came out mm. all the companies hopped onto the bandwagon of uh softer tipped shafts and mm. um, because sldr was so low spin and you know this lot you know loft up sort of thing was was going on and Get, trying to get that launch in the air to complement the lower spin mm -hmm. meant you were getting a lot of counterbalance tip soft shafts okay. uh, in the marketplace. Yep. So, you know, it, it fluctuates year to, year to year with the shafts and what comes out based on what the heads are doing. But it's so interesting because if someone had an SLDR, mm -hmm. maybe they paid a bunch of money for a nice shaft. How long ago was that? Six years, seven years, something like that, or five? Yeah, yeah, five-ish, yeah, five years ago. So you spent, let's say, a few hundred dollars on a nice shaft, mm -hmm. and you want to keep it and get a new head. Yep. It's maybe not a good idea, because it doesn't suit the new technology that's, versus the that's old. Right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's a good point. Um, so M4, so he's in a current driver, but he's not in a current fairwood. No. He's, uh, he's in an M1. Yes. Um, so he's using last year's fairwood, which still works great for him. Mm -hmm. uh, same shaft profile, the D+, Plus. he's got it in the 80TX. So a right. little bit more li weight. Yeah, a little bit heavier, yep. which is standard. You know, normally because we are, you know, playing the shaft a bit shorter, you'll jump up in weight a little bit. Fairly standard stuff. Right. We, we see that as, as something we do here. And it's also common to see a tour player lag back a couple of years on, on fairway woods because mm -hmm. there's such a particular thing, as you've mentioned, to fit and to get something you're confident yeah. in. They really have a hard time finding a fairway wood they like. Definitely. So it's, even to have a one year old club is that's mm -hmm. almost new by some people's standards. Yeah. Isn't um notice Henrik Stenson? He's using like a, a really old Callaway, isn't he? Like I mean, a, he, he kind of has this old run that he's used for the longest time with yeah. his Graphloid Blue, and he obviously used it to great effect to win the British Open. And, mm -hmm. But he, he has tried some of the newer tech um, three woods, trying to see if there's something a little better for him. Oh. You know, I, I've, I've not looked at his what's in the bag. He's, he's been kind of a little off form recently, but he has been, yeah. uh, I wonder if he's playing rogue uh, and whether that's kind of in his bag right now. see if he's testing it. I don't think he was this past weekend, right. um, but uh, it's just interesting. I mean, the guy hits it 295 yeah. every time, so why yeah. change? I know, I, mean. I know. He's, he's, he's For the, the little bit of distance he sacrifices with the three wood, he puts yeah. in play 
most of the time. And most of the new clubs are geared towards more forgiveness. Yeah. And he hits it so solid in the yeah, middle, then I know. maybe it doesn't matter for him. For sure. So one thing I thought was interesting with Casey's bag, that he's got a four hybrid yeah. in the M3. So the, this whole driving iron thing, has really taken off. The lot like, of guys playing yeah, that. And the, Tiger was great with that, wasn't I know. he? And so many guys, it's like, it's it, to me, it's like the biggest trend in terms of equipment mm -hmm. recently. So yeah. interesting that he uses, not only does he use a hybrid, it's a high lofted hybrid. Yeah, he uses the 21. Yeah, so again, is that getting back to his natural ball flight being a little bit on the low side? On the lower side, yeah. yeah, yeah, without a shadow, without trying to launch that up. I mean, you look at the head being 10.5, uses an M1 three wood, and he uses, uh, uses the, the four hybrid right. in the M3. Uh, which is 21 degrees, he, that's paired up with a 10 say white, yep. 100 gram X-Flex shaft in, in that one, so it's a really strong profile. Yeah, which makes sense. Yep. But okay. it's interesting to, to, as you say, I mean, the loft, his kind of bag, it suits it. He's playing a high loft in the mm -hmm. driver because he's a low spin, or yep. a low launch player. Yep. And a driving iron probably just wouldn't really suit him. Yeah. He could maybe just hit bullets off the tee, but into a green, this is like, you know, a much more suitable club. But definitely, definitely. Um, iron wise so yeah. we talked a little bit about he, he became a free agent after he left Nike and um, he he went towards Mizuno mm -hmm. um, this year he's playing on MP25 four iron yes uh, and he's playing the MP5s on five through to wedge which are blades right which are blades yeah, yeah. Um, so he's playing them all the way through mm -hmm. uh, so just again you know we talked about Phil's bag last week and how he had the epic pro four iron in the bag mm -hmm. just for a little more forgiveness a little more ball speed just to bridge that gap between the little hot hybrid and, and obviously yeah. your, your other iron so it does tend to plug that gap a little bit easier it's all about gapping at that point and that's what I was going to say maybe that four iron is a, you know maybe even a custom loft or yeah. something and those guys those par Part three is some of them mm -hmm. over 220. Yeah. That four iron needs to land soft. For so sure. So that would explain why he said blade is not, maybe not the best. Fit. Not the best, yeah. And maybe not quite as forgiven as even the, the best players in the world would like yep. on, on those off center strikes. Yep. But the MP5 is a classic blade. Yes. I mean, that, that's a, I mean, just if you just, if you pick one of those up, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's as pure as pure gets when it comes to a blade. And, um, you know, the, the grain flow forging of, of Mizuno, I mean, their, their tagline is, uh, you know, nothing feels like a Mizuno and it's, mm -hmm. it's that for a reason. Yeah, and it, well, it's a great endorsement for them because not paid to play them. Yeah. He went around and said, here's everything everyone has to offer, I'm right. going to play these. Yep. It's kind of like how people keep an eye on the amateur ranks, mm -hmm. right? What are, what are the best amateurs in the world play? Mm -hmm. And I think you see a lot of good amateurs with Mizuno blades. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a reason, right? Definitely, exactly. Um, shafts and those, he's using the Nippon Modus 120s. One of your favorites. Yep, I love that, love that shaft. And uh, he's, he's been a Nippon guy for a long time. He, right now he's playing the TX mm -hmm. um, in, in that one. And he does a really interesting thing that I really like to do as well with, with the players that I work with. He, uh, he uses a, a flex softer in his wedges. Okay, so same uses, shaft. Yeah, same shaft. He yep. still uses the Modus 120, but mm -hmm. he goes to the 120X in the wedges rather than the TX which he has in the irons. Because we've got a lot of questions and we need to make a, a really good detailed video about it, but the wedge shaft versus iron shaft, sure. people are actually really curious. Yeah. So cool to see that a tour player, they do sometimes They're play paying attention shaft. to that. Yeah. Yep. So he's using his Volke wedges he's used for a long time. Mm. Um, you know, prior to, Casey was one of Knight's longest serving staff players, but prior to that, he was a, a titleist guy. He was, you yeah, know, back right. in the day, he was a, he was a 983K guy. He was playing Volky wedges and, mm -hmm. and that type of thing back in the day. So, you know, given the chance, he went back to play the, the Volky wedges, the SM6s. He's got 5208 F grind, 5610 S grind, and he's using actually a higher, uh, higher bounce lob wedge, which we talked, I think, a little bit about we in did, yeah. some other videos. He's using a 10 uh, degree bounce, 60 degree. So do you think that's that's more of a factor for his partial shots, the way he chips yeah. and hits bunker shots, it's stuff very like that? It's very suited to his technique. Yep. You know, slightly wider sole in the K grind, and mm. um, he's using that, obviously, for the way he plays, you know, his pitch shots. That's yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, definitely. That he went right back to that. I mean, those bulky wedges, they, there's, they're obviously so good, because when we were talking with um, with Aaron Dill down yeah. at the show, yep. I forget what that number was that he told us. How many guys switched to SM7? Yeah. It was something ridiculous. They, well, they were that particular week, uh, I believe it was at Torrey Pines, mm -hmm. um, I believe it was there was about 260 wedges you know in bags and about 160 something of something them were, were Vokies right? yeah, yeah it, was, it was a lot and so. new Vokies too like yeah. their newest model yeah, yeah. so 
um, that keeps those boys busy, that's for sure. Yep. Um, and then when it comes to the putter, he's using a Cameron, uh, yeah. a prototype Newport, which he's used. Um, Nothing too crazy no, with that. He, he's, always, he's always been a kind of that blade guy. Even at Nike, he was using that same sort of Newport shape I remember that, yep. um, when he was at Nike. So nothing you know nothing new there for him just yeah. a different different look and uh that's just something he's obviously you know been working at to try and get back in the winner circle that's the thing i think that's that's the biggest difference but he's he's the guy that uh, so many guys have changed putter head styles yeah. and, and yeah. he just hasn't really uh messed around with it i think he's just put in the t as he said he said i've worked so hard mm -hmm. i think yeah. he just put in hours in the practice screen and that's where the difference came well historically the young paul casey was an unbelievable yes. putter like when he first came out on tour and he was winning a lot in Europe, you know, winning the, the world match play at Wentworth and events like that, like events. He was, Paul Casey was an unbelievable putter. Yeah. Uh, and he lost that, you know, he became a better ball striker. He really worked on that with Peter Costas, his coach, and really developed that side of his game. But he, he kind of lost his way with the putting a little bit and a few injuries and different stuff. He, uh, he maybe did lose his way, but he has forced his way back in. And, You've got to think he's going to be a lock for the European Ryder Cup team this year. He has to be. And he rejoined the Euro Tour, is that right? So that he would be eligible? Yeah, I believe so. I believe Something so, like yeah. yeah. I mean, and you've got to think, even if he's not, you know, as long as he's eligible for a pick. Yeah, a pick. He's you've got, be. got to think with his consistency. He, you know, tail, uh, Team Europe are going to be up against it mm -hmm. with all the young Americans, oh, Spieth and Thomas and Fowler and uh, an informed Tiger Woods if he makes it and Phil and all these guys. I mean... It's going, to be a, it's going to be a pretty daunting task for Europe, but uh, they, they need guys like Paul Casey, Stenson, Rose, McElroy, all those guys with experience and that's add what, them in with John Rams. He's got so much experience that, that he's, he's a value to the team room sure. and, and good match play player. And, yep. yeah, I would say he's, he'd be a, a lock for that pick. Yeah, for sure. So he'll be, he'll be interested to see what he does. And uh, the last but not least, he uses his Pro V1 golf ball, yep. um, uses the standard ball, which has slightly, uh, slightly lower launch but similar spin pattern to the X is what we're hearing is the, the new profile on the ball. So he, uh, he's used, I mean, he obviously used Pro V1 before. Then at Nike, he had a variation of their resin right. golf ball. Yep. Um, so, and he's back onto the Pro V1. And the Pro V1, he's probably chosen for green side spin and control and yep. work backwards. Kind of like what we've talked about. You know, you start at the putter and you mm -hmm. work backwards. More than likely he's done that because, you know, the X may spin a bit less off the driver, but... Yeah, he's he's waiting it better for his shorter shots, and that's it. And and you know what? That with that ball fitting, guys. I mean, that's a really interesting thing. We're seeing the more ball fits we do. Some people create different conditions with mm -hmm. uh, with different balls. I mean, what it says it's supposed to do. Not everyone follows suit with that. So you know, he's obviously done some significant testing, and and he finds that that Pro V1 is exactly what he needs and gives him the best overall balance like you said Matt from the green back to the tee that's yeah. an important thing because we do play most of the shots with the putters and the wedges yeah. you know and less so with the irons and the driver that's what the, the tournaments come down to yeah. is chipping and putting and wedge shots and yeah 100% those guys, it's a no-brainer definitely so on to Bay Hill this week and um, you know yes. we'll see we'll see you know strong field and um, so, like everyone's pretty much going right yeah I mean missing everyone everyone likes to make the the trip to Bay Hill Good golf course, maybe not the best golf course on the PGA Tour, but it's paying homage to, to Mr. Palmer. There's, and a, there's a definite yeah, aura when you're You want there to do that. Yeah, I think you know, the guys you, love You it. want to do that, so that's, that's fitting. So, uh, guys, thanks again for watching, and we'll be back next Monday with a version of Why in the Bag.